Catholic clergy in particular, and many Protestants teach the people that those who died in sin are now in purgatory or torment. What is meant by purgatory and who are there? Purgatory means to cleanse or to make pure, and the supposed purgatory is presumed to be a place for the cleansing of men from sin so that when a sinner dies, he might be cleansed after being dead. The clergy claim that this may be done while a man is dead. They also teach that the prayers of priests can be said for one in purgatory, and thereby his term of punishment shortened and he released from punishment at a much earlier date. Many good people have paid large sums of money to Catholic priests to pray for their dead ones upon the theory that they could get them out of purgatory. It is therefore seen that the purgatorial teaching has been used as a means of obtaining revenue. The doctrine of sinners suffering in purgatory is wholly false and has brought a great reproach upon the name of Jehovah God. It would be a terrible thing if the Almighty God would commit men to purgatory and then permit other men who are also imperfect to pray for them to get them out of purgatory and to receive a money consideration for so doing. As the Bible plainly teaches, those who have died are entirely out of existence and unconscious, not knowing anything. If we believe the Bible, then we must certainly know that there is no person in purgatory and that there is no such place in existence. There is not one scripture in the Bible to support the purgatory theory. The false doctrine of purgatory began to be taught in the Roman Catholic organization some 1,600 years ago, and since that time, Catholic priests have continued to preach it and to collect money for prayers upon the pretext of getting men out of purgatory. The people have paid their money and got nothing in return. This is another false doctrine of Satan based upon his original lie, his purpose being to deceive the people and cause them to suffer both mentally and materially. Because this doctrine has been taught so many centuries, doubtless many priests in the Catholic Church verily believe that it is true, but that does not make it true. Ask them to show you one text in the Bible to the effect that the dead are conscious in purgatory and they'll not be able to do so. Some will cite the case of the thief that was crucified the day that Jesus died. A thief said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus replied, I say unto you today, that is now, shalt thou be with me in paradise? The word paradise means a garden or beautiful condition of the earth and has no reference to a place of cleansing. Jesus did not go to purgatory or any other place that day because he was dead and in the grave for three days. After his resurrection, he ascended into heaven. Paradise has reference to the beautiful earth which will be made so by Jesus during the time of his kingdom. The thief died that very day and went into the grave and is there yet. The meaning of Jesus' words, therefore, are these, that because the thief exercised faith in Jesus, he would be brought forth during the reign of Christ and have an opportunity to live on the beautiful earth. This matter is fully explained in the book Re Reconciliation, which you should read. Furthermore, priests have no authority to say prayers for the forgiveness of sins of those who have died. Only God can forgive sins, and prayers for the dead are not heard by Jehovah. No man's prayers are heard until that person believes on God and Christ and then consecrates himself to do the will of God. To claim that men are suffering in purgatory and can be released by the prayers of others is not only a false doctrine, but a defamation of God's holy name. The dead are in the tomb or grave, awaiting to be awakened out of death. Jesus said, Marvel not, the hour is coming in which all that are in their graves shall hear his voice and come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection by judgment. Each one must decide for himself whether or not he desires to believe the words of imperfect men or to take the authoritative words of the Lord Jesus. My advice is that you read your Bible together with the books explaining it and find out these truths for yourself. Learn of Jehovah and do his will and he will enlighten you.